Next, let's look at some tuple, set, and dictionary operations. Recall again that operations simply mean that we are trying to use certain operators like plus minus times divide or certain permissible function calls, such as those set of functions associated with a particular data type like list, tuple, set, and dictionary to operate on values pertaining to that data type. For example, if I have a tuple like 5, 2 and another tuple that is generated from uh, running this range values from 3 to 5, what can I do with uh, these two tuples? Can I combine them? So I do a T plus U, and then, then I will be, be basically creating a new tuple. So how would that look like? And it turns out that it is like a list. And because we append uh, u behind t by doing a plus t plus u, um, we end up getting 5, 2, 3, 5. Now, clearly, it is violating the arithmetic's commutative property of plus because t plus u ought to be the same as u plus t uh, if they were integers. But they are not. They are tuple. So again, this is a little bit of an abuse of the operator. However, it is really convenient, right? And it is symmetrical with the data type list where we also do the same thing. And turns out that this is pretty useful and pretty symmetrical and we like it. And so this sticks in Python and we can of course uh, actually run it to have a feel of what is going on in the tuple operations. So when we run it, we see that T plus U actually resulted in appending onto T. And at the back of T, we have the anti anti entities of U being listed. So it's 5, 2, 3, 5. So the sequence matter just like list. However, the only thing between the list and the tuple is that tuple cannot be changed. All right. So when we try to change it, we, we are anticipating an error because Python as a system will forbid such a statement from being uh, successful. So we are expecting error. So we do it within a try. All right. We, we let it run. If this statement has been successful, we of course will be able to see a colon v3 has been changed to 1. However, it clearly is disallowed in Python. So end up we trigger the exception and v itself will not have been changed, most importantly, right? So it will print v cannot change and v will still retain the tuple having the same original content, cannot be changed. Next, let's look at a bunch of set operations. First, we construct explicitly the sets S1, S2, and S3. All right. Uh, we construct S1, S2 first, and that's done by listing it out numerically. And we also have a mixed type having a 1.5 there, and then the rest are integers. For S2, same thing as a mixed type, but they are all numerical. So um, let's see what happens when we union them, noticing that there is a 2 here. There's a bunch of uh, non-unique two when we enter it, but once Python receives those values, it will try to find uh, the unique ones, and only the unique ones will be stored in no particular order. So when we invoke the dot union method of the set S1, and it's always S1's union method, not S2, huh? because S2 is being passed as an object to this function called S1 dot union as a whole. And then what the union does is to find the content of S1 and merge, right, in a unique way, that's the set operation, set union operation, with the contents of S2. So if you find the, if you print out the union, we'll see that there will be unique values across S1 and S2 because the twos will be, um, the repeated tools will be basically uh, deduplicated so that only one copy is left. And every number in S3, the set S3, is guaranteed to be unique. We can also perform set intersections 
Yeah. So the two sets with unique values have common value two. I think. Right. So visually, we know that that's two. If we find the intersection between S1 and S2, so S4 should have two. But as you can see, when I eyeball it, I miss completely 1.5, right? And S4 actually also detected that, and the intersection should contain 1.5. Right? So in this case, S1 dot intersection. How do we know that the intersection is spelled intersection and not intersect? as in a verb, well, do a DIR of the value contained in S1, which is a set. So set in the set data type, intersection and union, right? They make sense. And that's why we can see it, but not in list, not in a tuple. Now, we can also use the built-in help function to say, well, S1's intersection uh, how do I really use it as in what's the format? Do I pass uh, some special values or do I just pass the next set of values to be uh, intersected with? So we can find some basic help here. All right. And of course, for more extensive tutorials, we go online to find other uh, websites for help. We can do a set minusing and that is uh, totally not exactly the same as intersection because what that does is that uh, it's an asymmetrical operations in that first we find whatever values there are in S1. And that's the, the universal set. So that is, so whatever is left of S1 minus S2 must be a subset of S1 to begin with. Then we find the values of S2 Whichever value is found will be removed from S1. So we don't find one, we find two, two is removed. We find 1.5, that is being removed. And we don't find four, we don't find nine, that's not an error. And finally, what's left in uh, that temporary set is the set of uh, containing the, 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 the number five. So that would be the value that's being left, the set with only a number five. Now we make a copy, and now we understand that copy is going to make a new set whose content is a photosetted copy of S1. So, so S1 has this, and if you make a copy of it, all right, it is uh, different. Different as in different set. So S6 is not the same as S1, but the values are the same. The contents are the same. So when we print it out, we, we actually see this line here, all right, this print here. Now we add a 99 to set S1. So we do that. And you notice that 99 is not necessarily appended towards the end of S1, unlike list or tuple. So there is no um, requirement for Python to follow that rule for sets. We can also discard 2 for sets. So S2, when we discard 2, uh, we are left with, with the remaining numbers and we print it out like this. Okay. So far, so good. Now, uh, the is operator is going to behave similarly like the like uh, what we tried out in the, in the list operations. So if we say S7 is a copy of S1, right? What is S1? What is S7? Well, on the surface, they look the same. So are they having the same content that's on the surface? Are they having the same values? Yes. But is S1 the same set as S7? So literally, it, we can imagine it as, is this plastic bag having apple, orange, and pear having the same content as the other second plastic bag that has apple, orange, and pear? Yes, they do. But is this bag the same as that bag, physically same bag? No, right? So uh, it would be false. S1 is not the same bag as uh, S7. Of course, correctly, we should say it's not the same set as S7. Just to illustrate the concept of equality and is a copy of is and uh, it, yeah. So whether is or is not. Finally, and very excitedly, uh, we have the dictionary operations. Dictionary is very, very useful because as we discussed before, it is like 
uh, structured data type that allows us to map one thing to another. It feels and, 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 and uh, models like a dictionary, our real life dictionary. It can mimic some sort of uh, translation. And in real life, we have a lot of translation, like language translation, like spelling translation, like um, pronunciation, like dictionary. This word, how do you pronounce it? What's the synonym, anonyms, and so on? And also, we can think of dictionary as a quick uh, word search, like a miniature Google universe that we say within this dictionary, um, what is what is the meaning or example of this key keyword, right? So we can do that. So let me just do a quick copy and paste over of our sample code. Okay, so now let's run it and we are now in custody of dictionary one having um, key two mapping to two, three mapping to three. And so it's just like, what's the English spelling for the integer five? So we say D1 square bracket five. Right. Um, a few, a couple of methods that are commonly used for dictionary. We might want a bunch of the keys. That means take out the two, three, and five and form a, a sort of a return value containing this. Uh, I, I was trying to say it's a list, but actually, as you see, it is a dictionary keys kind of a list in other words it's it's actually like a list to us but the physical the actual data type in python is called dict underscore keys so by doing that we can extract a bunch of keys very uh immediately so it's like a generator that's ready to generate a lot of keys except it's not listed out so we can always say uh what is the list of keys All right that would oh sorry um did i con oh i didn't store it so we can always say list of the d1 of keys right so this d1 dot keys gives us a kind of a you can imagine it like a range it gives us a generator of all the keys now rem remember python is capable of storing a lot, a lot of uh, items inside the dictionary so if this list of keys turns out to be hundred thousand uh in quantity you really don't want to accidentally print it and start you know looking at the bunch of bits and bytes scrolling across the screen and so that's why when we say give me the a list of keys we can abuse the word a little bit by saying a list of keys but we know it's actually a generator so we can list it out by by forcing the generator to run and produce all the keys uh, uh once for every unique key right so by running a list around it we managed to do that. We can also say tuple it and we will generate a read-only list of keys, right? And basically that's that.